Hello, welcome to another video where we are looking at trig powers and how to integrate trig powers. We want to uh, be able to make it through this, this second level where we're looking at powers of tangent and secant. We went through in previous videos the method of how to deal when the power of tangent is odd, what to do when the power of secant is even, and now we're making our way through, well, the other possibilities. And the, and the simple notion is that there's no technique to follow. There's no use of the setup. And so you have to be able to uh, sort of make your way through uh, the problems the best you can. In the, in the previous video, we integrated tangent and secant. We integrated uh, tangent squared and secant squared. And now in this video, we're going to integrate tangent cubed by itself and secant cubed by itself. So how do you integrate tangent cubed? Well, it does fit the the uh, formula that, you know, the power of tangent is odd, but there are no secant powers present. That whole technique is built off of factoring out a tangent and a secant, and you can't do that here. But watch what you can do, though. Still factor out a tangent. You'll be left with a tangent squared. Trade those tan squareds in for secant squared. Remember the identity, the fact that 1 plus the tan squared is the secant squared. So the tan squared is secant squared minus 1. Okay. We're not setting up a u sub. What we're doing is basically trying to make our way through this the best we can. Next thing we should probably do is distribute. So multiply the tangent x inside. And it actually turns out that if you let, you know, in that first integral there, the derivative of one part is the other part. That's a perfect u sub. And in a previous video, or we, or hopefully you have in your library of functions, how to integrate tangent of x. But for that first integral there, yeah, if, if you take the derivative of tangent, you get secant squared. So when that situation happens, when you see one part of the integrand, and then its derivative is the other part of the integrand, then that's a perfect setup for u sub. Not the same u sub as, as the other method had us doing. But yeah, here we're just going to let u be equal to tangent. The derivative is secant squared. It's really u du, and that's u squared over 2. And so that part there, that first integral is going to be 1 half of tangent squared. When it comes to the second integral, hopefully you have this thing readily accessible. It is uh, the natural log of secant. Uh, absolute value and uh, secants inside of absolute value bars. Uh, so we're done. We have one half the tangent squared minus the natural log of secant. You can also represent that with a cosine if you'd like. So that wasn't that bad. You know, factor out a tangent, convert the tangent squares into secant squares, and um, distribute and kind of work your way through. It isn't that bad. It doesn't fit exactly um, the previous method of, of being able to deal with the power of tangent being odd by factoring out a tangent and factoring out a secant, but you're still able to make your way through it. All right, one more here. We're going to do, this is the toughest of all, save the worst for last here, how to integrate secant cubed. It just sneaks up on you. It's not, it's, it's, you don't, you don't, you don't expect what's going to happen. Um, it actually requires integration by parts. And so it doesn't look like, like why would that be integration by parts? But it is. Uh, break it apart to be secant and secant squared, just like what you did with the uh, with the tangent. And so uh, choose one part to be secant, the other part to be secant squared. So du is going to be secant and secant squared uh, is going to be dv. Remember how integration by parts works. You take the derivative of u, you take the integral of dv. What is the derivative of secant? Secant tangent. What is the integral of secant squared? What function has secant squared as its derivative? Tangent. How do you set up the formula for integration by parts? You multiply uv and you subtract the integral on v du. So you're going to have secant x tan x minus the integral of secant x tan squared x. Okay. Integration by parts. Okay. We're doing great. Now, when you integrate by parts, your job is to trade one integral in 
for a simpler integral. And the, the cost is that, of course, there's this other part here, the product, the UV product. But how is this integral simpler? We have tangent who's squared and secant who's cubed. That doesn't fit one of our previous methods. But like before, in the, in the example we did right before this, you just kind of like work your way through it best you can. We're going to trade in tan squared for secant squared minus 1. Why would you do that? Watch what happens when you do that. Distribute, of course, and have secant cubed minus secant. If you want to employ the negative in there too, you could do that. So negative secant cubed plus secant. Why would you want to do that? Watch what happens. Let's uh, break this integral up into two separate integrals. We we're originally trying to integrate secant cubed. And on the right hand side, we have secant cubed, the integral on secant cubed. This is very much like what happened at the end of the last set of lectures when we're trying to integrate um, the exponential times the trig. We integrate once, integrate it again, and we ended up being basically at the point where the integral that we're looking for ends up on the other side and it becomes algebra after that. Same thing here. The integral that we're looking for ends up on the other side, so it becomes algebra after that. We can just add that over to the other side. Uh, we know how to integrate secant. So we add over that secant cubed. Now we have two of them on the left-hand side. We have the integral of secant. Now that first part, remember secant tangent, that's the UV part. There's no integral on that. So on the right-hand side, we have no integral anymore. But on the left-hand side, we have twice what we were looking for. So what do we do to get what we're looking for? We take half of it. Multiply both sides by a half. Whew, that was tough. But we did it. Integration by parts where you have a circular argument and you get back to where you started at. Uh, it only took integration by parts once, but I, that was a bit much. I just want you to know that it, it's a bit much when you don't fit exactly the criteria that helps you get into, you know, a nice little polynomial use of integral. Um, at the bottom of this slide here, I just have the um, sort of summary of, of, the, of this video and the previous video. Um, when, when no method works, you're down to just trying to make it through however you can. And we did six integrals. Okay, We integrated tan. We integrated secant. We integrated tan squared. We integrated secant squared. And in this video, we've integrated tan cubed and we integrated secant cubed. I would say just file those away. Uh, you never want to have to go through all that again in your life. Well, one of them is really easy. Not, I mean, well, I guess a few of them aren't that bad, but whew, that last one was tough. And I don't know if it's ever going to come up again, but just know that you can make your way through, but um, it's best if you have the formula right there. Again, you can surely use it. All right. Now, um, before we end this video, I just want to let you know where we're at in this whole uh, series here. Um, we're talking about integrating trig powers, and there were three subdivisions. We have handled two of them. We've talked about how to deal with powers of sine and powers of cosine, and it was totally solvable. Every possible combination was able to be dealt with. And then we talked about how to integrate powers of tangent and powers of secant. Not every possibility can be dealt with, but we do know how to deal with when the power of tangent is odd and there's a secant around. And we do know how to deal with when the power of secant is even. All right. So then what does that leave us with? Part three, the next video will attack how to deal with, it's not really powers of trig, but how to deal with products of trig functions, sine with itself and cosine with itself, and a, maybe a mixture of sine and cosine when there's multipliers on the angles and the multipliers are different. You know, if they were the same, we'd be talking about powers uh, squared again, you know, sine squared of mx. But um, no, we want them to be different. And it's just using identity. It might be the easy, easiest of all. It kind of fits under the umbrella of um, trig integrals, but not trig powers. But I like to just, by, for short, call this entire section trig powers. Whew. All right, it's been quite the journey. We're almost through it. And um, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. I'm here to help. Uh, my name is Nakaya Rimmer, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Take care.